first, a little bit of the history is not going to be too long. Then we're going to go into some facts about Black History Month. Black History Month is the month of February, and many places recognize it now. North America, the UK, and some other countries. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head, but we're going to learn a little bit about it. As usual, everything's going to be linked in the description. So, if you would like to research some more for yourself, I encourage you to do so. Uh, this little history excerpt that I'm reading is from blackhistorymonth.gov, and they actually took that, this, from an excerpt from an essay by Daryl Michael Scott uh, from Howard University for the Association the study of African American life and history. So yeah, this will be a little bit of history here. I'll even drop a Wikipedia link, sure, for those who uh, want that, or you can just Google Black History History. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Of course, we're going to start up here. The Library of Congress, National Archives and Records Administration, National Endowment for the Humanities, National Gallery of Art, National Park Service, Smithsonian Institution, and United States Holocaust Memorial Museum join in paying tribute to the generations of African Americans who struggled with adversity to achieve full citizenship in American society. As a Harvard-trained historian, Carter G. Woods, like W.E.B. Du Bois before him, believed that truth could not be denied that reason would prevail over prejudice. His hopes to raise awareness of African Americans' contributions to civilization was realized when he and the organization he founded, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, the ASNLH, conceived and announced Negro History Week in 1925. The event was first celebrated during a week in February that encompassed the birthdays of both Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The response was overwhelming. Black history clubs sprang up, teachers demanded materials to instruct their pupils, and progressive whites, not simply white scholars and philanthropists, stepped forward to endorse the effort. By the time of Woodson's death in 1950, Negro History Week had become a central part of African American life, and substantial progress had been made in bringing more Americans to appreciate the celebration. At mid-century, mayors of cities nationwide issued proclamations noting Negro History Week. The Black Awakening of the 1960s dramatically expanded the consciousness of African Americans about the importance of black history, and the Civil Rights Movement focused Americans of all colors on the subject of the contributions of African Americans to our history and culture. The celebration was expanded to a month in 1976, the nation's bicentennial. President Gerald R. Ford urged Americans to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. That year, after the first celebration, the association held the first Black History Month. By this time, the entire nation had come to recognize the importance of black history in the drama of the American story. Since then, each American president has issued Black History Month proclamations, and the association, now the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, the ASALH continues to promote the study of black history all year. I mean, yeah, first it was a week, now it's a month. Hey, look, black history is American history. Okay, so it's really just that simple. People who argue otherwise are being purposely dense. Okay, it's really just that simple. 
which means it should just be taught alongside regular history, just normally, you know, put everything out there. You teach about the Holocaust, teach about slavery, why they're both bad. So, black history is American history. I'm not going to fight anybody on this. And if you go down into the comments, uh, please be respectful, be kind, okay? That's all this channel is about. We want to be kind to everybody. We respect everybody here on this channel, okay? Because I know some people get worked up about everybody being equal for some reason. Okay, so we move on to 26 little known black history facts you may not have learned in school. These span various topics that will inspire you to take your research beyond Black History Month. I hope so. Hey, learned something. Thank you, Mackenzie. And it was written recently, so these hopefully are pretty up to date. I they should be right. Okay, first paragraph here. From the hidden figures that made an impact, essential black inventors, change-making civil rights leaders, award-winning authors, and show-stopping 21st century women, black history is rich in America. Resources like blackpast.org, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and the Library of Congress are great ways to expand on your knowledge as well as learn little-known black history facts to further your understanding of African American culture. We've gathered a few choice bits of trivia spanning various topics that will inspire you to take your research beyond Black History Month. Hopefully so. We're going to start off with a literature section. Here we have Phyllis Wheatley, right here. That was illustrated by Moorhead on the front page of her book, Poems on Various Subjects. Number one, Phyllis Wheatley was the first African American to publish a book of poetry, Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral, in 1773. Born in Gambia and sold to the Wheatley family in Boston when she was seven years old, Wheatley was emancipated shortly after her book was released. She was only emancipated after her book was released. Um, number two. Bar's Fight, written by poet and activist Lucy Terry in 1746, was the first known poem written by a black American. Terry was enslaved in Rhode Island as a toddler, but became free at age 26 after marrying a free black man. <laughs> enslaved as a toddler. I mean, yeah, this, this stuff is ridiculous, man. <sighs> See, that's why you gotta know your history. Anyway. Ah, uh, hey. Good on you, Lucy Derry. Good on you. Number three. Clotel, or The President's Daughter, was the first novel published by an African American in 1853. It was written by abolitionist and lecturer William Wells Brown okay 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 so we have three facts there in the literature section and now we're going to move on to the important figure section all right number one in this section William Tucker was the first known black person to be born in the 13 colonies he was born in Jamestown, Virginia in 1624. According to blackpast.org, his parents were indentured servants and part of the first group of Africans brought to colonial soil by Great Britain. Okay, first person join. Join, not join, born. William Tucker. Okay, okay. Number two. After years of remarkable work as an attorney, Thurgood Marshall became the first African American to serve in the U.S. Supreme Court, officially nominated by President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1967. He served as a justice until 1991. We've all heard of Thurgood Marshall, right? Was 
in her movie about him fairly recently, within like the past decade. Yep, number three. In 1854, John Mercer Langston notably became the first African American lawyer in the state of Ohio. He went on to serve as the dean of the law department and vice president of Howard University. He is also remembered as the first African American from Virginia to be elected to public office, specifically to the U.S. Congress. A nice, a way to go, John Mercer Langston. Howard University is an HBCU, by the way, in Washington, D.C. HBCU stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Okay. Number four. Anthony Benezet, a white Quaker abolitionist and educator, is credited with creating the first public school for African American children in the early 1770s. Hey, way to go, Anthony. That's, that's nice. It's always good when you have people from other groups that are trying to help people in other groups, if you know what I mean. <laughs> for example, this is a white Quaker trying to help black people that, you know, you always need people from the, uh, uh, from the oppressors trying to help the oppressed, people from the group of the oppressors trying to help the oppressed because if nobody, if no white people ever wanted to help black people, then black people would still be, you know, I mean, a lot of them are still viewed as lesser by a lot of people, but you know what I'm trying to say? You need people that are white to support black people, because that'll help convince some of the other white people that everybody's equal. Unfortunately, this is the way it is, because not everybody is everybody is equal. It's quite unfortunate, I know, I know silly as I mean on this channel from what I've seen we're all very inclusive here so I hope that none of you would have that issue where you don't think other people are equal to you no matter what uh, you look like whatever you identify as anyway number five after graduating from Oberlin College in 1850 with a literary degree Lucy Stanton First black woman in America to earn a four-year college degree. Hey, way to go, Lucy Stanton. We have two Lucys. We had Lucy Terry and Lucy Stanton. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Now we're going to move on to the music and television section. And here we have Nat King Cole. Right here. First, Godmother by Billboard, singer and music producer Sylvia Robinson produced the first ever commercially successful rap record, Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang. And along with her husband, she co-owned the first hip-hop label, Sugar Hill Records. Sylvia Robinson doing the dang thing. Nice. Number two, renowned singer and jazz pianist Nat King Cole was the first black American to host a TV show, NBC's The Nat King Cole Show. Good stuff. Good stuff. Number three. Stevie Wonder is not only the first black artist to win a Grammy for Album of the Year for 1973's Inner Visions, but the first and only musician to win Album of the Year with three consecutive studio albums. Look at that. Look at that. The old Grammy uh, dynasty. You know, three years in a row. I mean, Stevie Wonder, one of the greatest musicians of all time. No. I mean, come on. All right, number four. In 1981, podcast journalist Bryant Gumbel became the first black person to host a network morning show when he joined NBC's Today Show. Hey, Brian Gumbel is still going, too. So, uh, hey, hey, representation, right? Number five, in 1940, Hattie McDaniel became the first black person to win an Oscar for her, support, for her supporting role in Gone with the Wind. 24 years.
years later, Sidney Poitier became the first black man to win an Oscar for his leading role in Lilies of the Field. Oh my goodness, this just reminded me, Sidney Poitier died fairly recently, just in January. But yeah, great to see. Great to see. Alright, we move on to the inventor section. We have three facts in here. Number one, Madam C.J. Walker created a line of hair care products for African American women, leading to her later becoming the first African American self made millionaire. There is now a Netflix series based upon her journey titled Self Made. Way to go, Madam C.J. Walker. Number two, computer scientist Lisa Gillupter assisted with the 1995 creation of Shockwave, essential technology that led to the development of web animation. So we have her to thank for gifts. Yes, I am a hard G in gifts. Nice, I remember. I mean, Shockwave used to be a big thing, no? Did they have, like, Shockwave websites or something? I don't know. Super old people can let me know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, number three. Agricultural scientist George Garver was responsible for creating over 500 new products from peanuts and sweet potatoes, including cooking oils, paint, and soap. This is George Washington Garver. For those who don't know, I feel like a lot of people learned in school about George Washington Garver and peanuts. Right? I mean, that chip was definitely uh, inserted for me. I know a lot about, well, I shouldn't say I know, I know enough about, I know that George Washington Carver made a lot of things with peanuts, okay? So, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the reason I said chip is because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an actual robot. For those who don't know, I'm a humanoid robot. So, okay, alright. Here's William, Wilma Rudolph of Clarksville, Tennessee. Breaks the tape to win her semifinal heat in the women's 100 meter dash. Wilma won in the new Olympic record time of 11.3 seconds in Rome, 1960. Okay, Wilma. Representing the USA. Alright, so what are we in the sports, right? Yeah, sports, of course, because we're looking at Wilma. <laughs> and this is it, this is actually the last section, and there's more stories here. So you can go on this website and click on these other links if you'd like to learn more. Alright, let's do it. Fact number one in the sports section. In 1908, after winning the 4 by 400 meter relay, John Taylor became the first African American to win gold in the Olympics. Nice. And in 1948, Alice Coachman became the first black woman in the world to win an Olympic gold medal while competing in the high jump. Nice. I think uh, track and field can be pretty fun to watch. Especially when you see people coming back from like really far back and coming to win. But hey, shout out John Taylor. And Alice Coachman. Nice. Fact number two. Founded in 1984, the Bill Pickett Invitational Rodeo is the only touring African American rodeo in the world. Wow, still really the only one. Oh man. Hey, Bill Pickett. Way to go. Number three. In 1920, Fritz Bob. The black athletes to play in the NFL. Pollard was also the league's first black coach. Wow. Wow. Fritz is a is an interesting name. I like that. Fritz. Okay, number four. In 2012, at the London Olympics, Gabby Douglas became the first black gymnast to win the individual all-around title. Really? The 2012 Olympics was the first time that happened? Wow. 
video. In 1996, Cheryl Swoops became the first player to sign with the WNBA with the league debuting a year later. Okay, so the first person to sign in the WNBA was black. I appreciate you. I appreciate you.